Hi everyone, Kim here at Olive City Homestead. I'm in Northern California, Zone 9B, and this is my permaculture homestead. Now on this channel, I focus on easy gardening anyone can do, including older folks, single folks, and folks who are facing chronic health issues. I happen to fall into all three of those categories, so I know what it's like to face those challenges. I like to share the great benefits of perennial fruits and veggies, and flowers too, and I like to encourage you to experiment and have fun with your gardens and your homesteads. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a very unusual tree, and yet one I think everyone should grow. It is called the medlar tree, so let's go take a look. Although medlar trees were a very common tree, back in the Middle Ages, a medieval tree really, uh, they are not so common today, pretty rare actually. And I don't know why really, because they're a fabulous tree and a fabulous fruit. So in the spring, these flower with pretty white blooms. I'll show you a picture of one here. And actually these yellow leaves earlier in the fall in October and in November are a brilliant orange. So the display is so gorgeous. And it won't surprise you to know that the medlar tree is in the rose family. These kind of look like rose hips, don't they? But they are medlar fruits. Now medlar fruits are kind of interesting, both in how they taste and in when you harvest them. So here I am, the beginning of December, harvesting these because you do wait until after frost. The frost is something they need, one or two of, before they're ready to harvest. And at that point, they will do what we call bledding, which is where they get even more ripe, and this hard fruit becomes soft. They cannot really be eaten when they're hard. They taste bitter that way, they're not good at all. But when soft, these fruit taste so delicious. They taste like cinnamon applesauce. That's what I think. Um, some people say kind of a nutmeggy apple butter very delicious. They're often made into jams, which is what I'm going to be doing with mine, but you can find many other ways to use them as well. So this tree actually does have a beautiful fall coloring to it when you catch it at the right time, as well as the beautiful green leaves and white blossoms of the spring. It's a prolific tree, totally easy to maintain because it takes almost no care at all. I need to come in here and do some pruning on my tree. You can see we've got a couple of branches that have gone straight up and I need to trim them down because like most of my fruit trees, I'm gonna be going for an open vase look and that allows for great air circulation. I also will keep it pruned down to a height of about seven or eight feet. That way I can reach all the fruit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these. They're coming right off because they're completely ready for harvesting right now. The medlar tree, if you'd like to try growing one, is actually hardy down to zone four. So all of you who've been telling me you can't grow some of my fruit trees because you're not in 9B like I am, well, this one you can grow. And it is prolific, self-pollinating, low maintenance, gorgeous, and interesting. I mean, who else is going to be growing a medlar tree? Who else is going to have spiced applesauce flavored fruit that you can eat fresh or use in a jam or get creative and do something really cool with? Now the medlar tree used to be super common in Europe. Some people think it originated there, but actually the Romans brought it over from Asia into Central and Southern Europe. And it became so common that that's what it was known as, the common medlar. Again, very rare today though. And you can get yours like I did from a great nursery in Washington. It's called Burnt Ridge Nursery. They have a lot of very interesting fruit trees. So I would advise you to go to the website and get their uh, small print catalog and get your order in ASAP so you'll get your trees sent as soon as they're ready. Now this spring, I'm gonna try my hand at propagating the tree and you can do that with seeds but I'm gonna do it the way that it's a little more likely to succeed which is with cuttings. Now if for some reason you need to harvest your tree before frost hits, maybe you're going on vacation or something like that, well you can harvest them before they're ripe but then you'll need to put them in the freezer for a couple of days and that will trick them into thinking they've gone through frost. 
And there I've got my first medlar harvest of the year. It's only my second harvest ever. Last year I had a couple of them. This year I've got a big bowl full, enough definitely to make at least one pint of jam, maybe two. And next year I should have a ton because this is a very prolific tree from a young age. In fact, you should actually, uh, like a lot of fruit trees, pick off the fruits the first year or two that it fruits to let the tree you know, establish itself better. And I did that. So this tree is about four years old and I'm very pleased with it. And I will let you know how it goes making this medlar jam. Hi again, everyone. I guess you can tell that it's been a while since I took that last video. Actually, it's been seven weeks. Yes, it's the end of January now, and I'm going to fill you in on how the blooding process went, and then we'll do a little pruning of the metal art tree. So Christmas marked two weeks after I harvested the medlars, which you saw, and it usually takes two to three weeks for the blooding process to finish. And my uh, medlars were right on schedule and I was just giving them a few more days to finish blooding before I was gonna move on and process them. So during that time, I poured over several recipes that I found and I watched the few YouTube videos that were available. And then I went and did some more research because some of those uh, videos disagree with each other. And in the end, I calculated that I had enough medlars to make a pint of jam and a medlar pie, which I was really excited about. Yes, sort of like a pumpkin pie, but even more scrumptious. And so I took that one recipe I found and I adjusted it and made it dairy-free, uh, added duck eggs, and added a gluten-free crust. So I was so ready to make that pie. And then disaster struck, as it sometimes does. <laughs> Just a day or two after Christmas, my oldest son and I were outside all day pruning some massive mulberry trees and I don't know what happened, but somehow I did something to my back and the next day I couldn't move without pain or without a cane. <laughs> now the medlars were fine. I kept checking on them every day and they were hanging in there like champs. They were proceeding to blet, <laughs> but they, they were fine. And then the day came that I felt I was finally ready to process the fruit and bake, but sadly that was one day too late. Remember, uh, bledding is a controlled rotting of the fruit and the meddlers had just rotted a little too much and they had started to grow mold. So better safe than sorry, I just put them in the compost and moved on lesson learned. <laughs> now I did taste a few of the medlars after they had blooded, before they went bad. I just, you know, peeled them and scooped out the flesh and they were so, so good. Now you may have heard, and it is, I think, true from all the research I've done, that many fruit trees, their fruit gets better a few years into their fruit production. So I was really pleased with how well these tasted after uh, just two years being in the ground here. Now, some videos on YouTube I found told me that I had to skin the fruit before I cooked it and used it, but that's simply not true. Uh, I based that on the fact that other videos successfully used the medlars, not first peeling and deseeding them. Now, every medlar has five pretty good sized seeds in it, but you can definitely just throw them whole into the pot to cook them down. And after they're cooked, you just simply push them through a sieve and the flesh goes right through, the seeds and skin remain behind. And then you have that wonderful, delicious flesh to use however you want in whatever recipes you want. Now I could be really upset, really sad about losing my whole first year medlar harvest, but you know, I'm choosing to focus on the positive aspects of all of this. And there are some really positive aspects. Number one, I know how easy it is to harvest and blet my medlars. And I also know how quickly I need to act at the end of that process. Number two, I have a few recipes ready to go, already adapted to my dairy-free, gluten-free lifestyle, and I'm really eager to use them come fall. Number three, next year my medlar tree is bound to produce a lot more fruit. And number four, my back is all better, just in time for spring and all the work that comes with it around here. So let's get going and prune my medlar tree now. 
Before we start, let me just mention there are four cuts you want to make when you're pruning, or four reasons to cut anyway. One is if you have any dead, dying, damaged branches that are going to die, yeah, you want to take those off for sure. Two, if you have any branches that are crossing, those need to be taken care of because they're just going to hurt each other. So take one out and leave the one you want. Three, you want to take out any suckers that are coming out from the base of the plant, from the rootstock, because those are just going to suck nutrition from the plant and they're not going to produce the fruit you want. And four, you're pruning for height control. So whether you have a dwarf, semi-dwarf, or regular rootstock that is growing your fruit tree, you want to grow it to the height that, well, you want. And you can. You can control your tree as long as you're consistent with your pruning. It might take some summer pruning as well as winter pruning, but you can. So prune it to the height you want. I like to keep mine between six and eight feet so I can harvest them easily. And now just two tips about your pruning. One, you always want to clean your pruning shears with alcohol. And two, you always want to make your cut at a 45 degree angle, not straight across because you don't want water to pool if it should rain on the cut because that could lead to infections of different kinds. Other than that, you are free in your pruning. Don't feel like you need to do it a certain way. There are so many ways to prune and it's really up to you. As long as you prune for those four reasons and you follow those two tips, you are safe. Prune it in the shape you want. Be, be artistic, do whatever you'd like. Now, while I make these few pruning cuts, I'm gonna fill you in on all the fantastic health benefits of the medlar tree, its fruit and its leaves. Now the medlar fruits are full of vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin C, and many of the B vitamins too. Here we have a crossing branch, so that's gonna need to come off. And I'm taking that off now, but then I'm looking here and I'm saying, you know, these branches are both coming up side by side together. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to prune this one down to here. And now I have this branch coming out and I'm going to prune this one to here. And now I have this branch coming out. So let me go ahead and do a little more pruning as I talk. The fruits of the medlar are also full of minerals, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and lots of iron. Medlar fruits also have a lot of anti-inflammatory properties, which is great. The thing I'm really excited about as far as health benefits go to the medlar tree though, is their leaves. They make an excellent medicinal tea for so many reasons. Now, when you're pruning a tree, medlar tree or any other tree, don't be scared. Be confident. You know what to do. And guess what? It will always grow back. So you'll have another chance to do it differently later. Be fearless. Oh, that branch is too tall. Now it's best to cut it right above an outward facing node. And there you go. Now this is a perfect example of a sucker that has grown up from the base of the tree. By the way, this tool here is just to make sure rabbits don't devour the bark of this tree. There we go, all taken care of. That looks really good. We'll see how it fills out in the spring. Now, before I tell you about the amazing health benefits of the medlar tree leaves, let me put in a disclaimer. I am not a doctor. 
<laughs> I'm not even a nurse. And I'm not giving medical advice here. I'm just sharing what has worked for me and my family. So I'm sharing from my own experience as well as from a lot of research I've done. And the research I do is based on reputable sources, academic studies, scientific studies, of which I am confident. Now I have to say I come from a background where I diagnosed my own daughter at a young age with a neurodegenerative disorder and a brain tumor, which, um, well, all the doctors we went to simply didn't see. They dismissed us. Now later, after my diagnosis was confirmed with DNA testing and a brain MRI, both of which I pushed for, uh, I will say that she was taken great care of. We had a lot of um, wonderful treatment and a lot of wonderful support from the people at uh, UCSF in San Francisco and at the Children's uh, NF Clinic and the Children's Brain Center there. And after six years, her brain tumor stabilized and we are continuing to deal with the uh, symptoms that come from her disorder. Now, if you've seen a few of my videos before, you might know that I myself suffer from a number of chronic health issues. I don't talk about them that much and the symptoms of them are not necessarily noticeable to others, <laughs> but they are to me. Uh, I have degenerative disc disease very severely in my neck. I have arthritis, both osteo and rheumatoid. I also have chronic venous insufficiency and IBS. So I have been enjoying the benefits of medicinal herbal teas for several years now and wow, they make such a huge difference that I just have to share about them with others. Again, this is my personal experience and the results might vary from person to person, but you know, when you're suffering with any kind of health issue, it's worth giving a try to something as simple and possibly as effective as an herbal tea that you could grow yourself so easily in your own backyard. So medlar leaves work to lower blood sugar, and this would be potentially great for anyone with diabetes or with insulin resistance, AKA prediabetes. Medlar leaves also are a diuretic, so they are helpful in preventing kidney stones and kidney infections. They're also full of carotenoids and flavonoids. So they're very high in antioxidants, which of course is great for, well, anti-aging in general. But they're especially high in camphorol, a flavonoid that is able to fight inflammation everywhere, including the brain. Scientists are very hopeful in the future that this can be used to help in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. Well, those are just some of the benefits that the medlar leaf tea can give us. And I'm really excited to share that with you come fall. Another thing I'll be doing in the fall that I will share with you is taking some semi hardwood cuttings from the medlar tree just behind me there. Yeah. So I can grow some more medlar trees for free because well, who doesn't like free? It's getting chilly out here, guys. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. I'm so glad you did. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so. If you hit the notification bell, you'll also be notified every time I upload a new video with more simple and practical tips that will help you in your gardens and your fruit orchards. And on that note, remember, you can create the life, the garden, the homestead you want. So why not start right now? See you next time, everyone.